She had her secrets. How's going out there, YouTube land and all social social media lands? Welcome to an all new video. In this video, we're doing a movie review of a new film that just came out on the 22nd of November and is a based on stage play and a book turned into a theatrical release. So, we're going to get right into that. Before we do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss this video and the other videos I put up. As always, people, if you enjoy my content here on YouTube, definitely check out my other social media platform, such as X, Facebook. Instagram, Threads, Patreon, pretty much post on these regularly, so definitely check them out. And as always, people, let's get right into this. So welcome one and all to an all new video. So like I was saying before, we're going to do a movie review of a new film that just came out November 22nd. And is based off of a stage play slash book called Wicked. Oh yeah. Wicked! Oh yeah! So Wicked, which is a, a, a stage play as well as a musical, uh, was based off of a book that got turned into a stage play and then just recently turned into this live-action theatrical film. Now, Wicked, if you're familiar with it, basically kind of gives you the story of the Wicked Witch of the West before she becomes the Wicked Witch of the West, basically. Kind of give you a small summary there. And, you know, it takes basically what is taken from the 1900 book, of course, of, you know, The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by Frank L. Baum, and takes those characters and kind of changes them, alters them, and gives them a whole new different type of life. And this film, you know, had a lot of great potential, a lot of those things that was an interesting take, you know, to take it to a whole other level, giving the Wicked Witch kind of a, you know, a background, giving her, you know, all this kind of stuff that leads her into becoming the Wicked Witch of the West. And I thought that was a really clever idea. And, you know, the, the author of the book, I thought that was really smart on his part, and he did a really great job with that. But the whole of the film... The whole idea is just really fun. And so when I saw the trailer for this film, I was like, holy crap, this looks like it's going to be pretty fun. It looks like it's going to have some great musical numbers. It's going to have all this kind of cool stuff. And that it has a lot of great, interesting things that I really enjoy that, you know, what I really loved about the original film, The Wizard of Oz, back in 1939. And so, you know, you take all those great elements and... You know, it, it's one of those things you're just kind of like, oh, that's a great idea. This is a great idea. But you know what? Unfortunately, this movie, it just completely goes, <laughs> unfortunately. Not like, you know, how, you know, Dorothy Gale says, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. You, you know, and so it's unfortunate that this film uh, just ended up being... You know, kind of blah for me. I actually can't believe how long the film is at two hours and 40 minutes long. Uh, you know, I am really shocked that they decided to go with almost a three hour runtime for this thing, especially when they're putting it into two parts. Uh, but at the same time, I just was really disappointed with it. I thought there was going to be so much more to it. I thought it was going to be a lot better. And I just thought overall it was going to have a, you know, just more musical to it and just better songs and stuff like that. And I feel even the songs themselves were lackluster in the film. And I just really, you know, was just like... What am I watching here? Am I actually watching a musical? Because if you think of musicals like Hairspray or, you know, Singing in the Rain or newer stuff like, you know, Frozen and, you know, Disney, you know, singing films, you know, Beauty and Beast, Lion King, Aladdin, Little Mermaid, stuff like that, you know, you have a really great, like, storyline and great music. And the music is usually really good in the film and really does well. And yet I felt that these songs were just really lackluster and didn't feel the same as they were from the actual stage play. Now, of course, this happens to be directed another by a gentleman that goes by the name of Mr. John M. Chu. Oh yeah, John M. Chu. Woo, John M. Chu, yeah. So 
So John, I'm sure you might recognize from a few other things over the years. Uh, he's become a really big staple. And I was actually shocked that he's the one that directed this film. I didn't feel it was up his alley versus what else I've seen from him. And I just thought it was kind of an odd genre for him to do. But overall, I think that what he was presented and what he had to give, I thought he did a pretty decent job. And I enjoy some of the things that he brought to the film. I like some of the, definitely there's some great sequences with some of the characters that were done well, that were entertaining, enjoyable. And, you know, I thought the graphics in the film were done really well, and I thought he did a good job of giving us a really authentic-looking, uh, you know, you know, very Wizard of Oz vibes, you know, with the Emerald City, the Munchkin Land, and all that kind of stuff. They did a really good job of bringing that to life, and I just really enjoyed it uh, in that aspect. And I thought John did a really good job of giving us that very much very Oz feeling, you know, land and landscape and made it look very visually appealing. Uh, kind of like Oz the Great and Powerful that came out in 2013 or, you know, Return to Oz back in the 80s. You know, both of those films, you know, were kind of panned by the critics, but at the same time, they were visually amazingly done. And that's how I feel Wicked is done. I think the visuals are done really well. You know, from the CGI animals and all that kind of stuff, they did a really good job there, bringing that to life from, the, from you know, the stage play and the book itself. And I thought John did a really good job of bringing that to life. Now, if you haven't seen anything else John M. Chu has directed, definitely a great film to check out of his. It's a great live-action action film that is based off of a great Hasbro toy called G.I. Joe Retaliation. Yeah! G.I. Joe Retaliation. Yeah, this film is fantastic, and I love what John did with it. Uh, I mean, he took what Steven Summers started and gave us a really solid sequel that brought in some great other characters. We brought in The Rock, and we brought in Bruce Willis in this film. And just John did a re really great job of giving us a really great, solid action film. And I loved what he did with the film because he made it even more action-y than the first film and gave us some really great fight choreography and really great fight sequences that just... I think are a really fun action packed type of film that really brings J.I. Joe characters to life. And I also enjoyed how he went even a more a little bit more of a darker level and not as comic y level with this film as well. And I liked that whole concept and I thought that they did a really good job with that and that John directed it really well. If you want to see John M. Chu's uh, directing, definitely check out G.I. Joe Retaliation. He did a really phenomenal job with that. But overall, what he did with Wicked, I thought he did a decent enough job to make it somewhat entertaining and give us some fun things about the film. And I think that he did a great job of, you know, trying to give us something that was very, uh, you know, you know, on point versus, you know, being all kinds of different types of uh, messaging and stuff like that I feel in the film because there definitely was some woke things I felt in the film and I was really surprised he dis he allowed that into his film. So if, if you are into that type of filmmaking, definitely you'll love what John did with the film. But overall, I think that John did a decent job with what material he had and what he did and I thought he overall did a good job. If you haven't seen John M. Chu direct anything, definitely go check out Wicked. It's definitely worth a watch at least once. So this film has a really amazing cast that, you know, all bring something fun to the film. Definitely some that I think are just kind of, that were just there because they're a big name. But other than that, there are a few people in this that were really fun and just really enjoyable characters that I really enjoyed. Now, of course, to start us off with this, you know, a great cast is none other than Glinda herself, or Galinda, as she says, Miss Ariana Grande! Oh yeah! Ariana Grande! Woo! So Ariana Grande, you might recognize, of course, from her TV days when she was on a couple different Nickelodeon shows. Uh, you might recognize her, of course, from her successful music career that she has had. Uh, other than that, I really haven't seen her much. There was one film she was in. She was briefly in it. I didn't 
you know, really remembered her in it, but I did check out the scene, and I do recall going, oh, okay, she wasn't too bad in it. Uh, you know, she was definitely Ariana Grande. But what I feel she brought to G Galinda, or Glinda, as she later goes on in the film, uh, you know, it was just basically watching a plastic toy or robot work at this. Her acting in this film was just so horrible, and it was really sad. I mean, it was like... Almost every single scene she was in, she was trying to overachieve too much in her acting. And she's nothing that fantastic at acting anyways. I mean, she's mediocre by means. But overall, I just I was not getting why she went the direction she did and why John M. Chu decided for her to go in that direction too in this film. It was actually really sad and disappointing because... Glinda is such a great character, and Billy, you know, Piper, uh, or not Billy Piper, uh, the original, you know, Glinda uh, from the original Wizard of Oz and other, you know, versions of the stage play and stuff like that, were amazing at this character, and, you know, Glinda was a really interesting character. She was very fun. She was very sweet and kind, and she wasn't like this airhead, which, you know, Ariana Grande plays her as, and I was just kind of like watching through the whole movie going, huh? Why are you portraying Glinda like this? Like, that makes no sense to me, especially when she's supposed to be the good witch of the North. And I was, like, really shocked at, you know, why they went that route. And I was, you know, just, I was not happy with that performance. And I didn't do anything entertaining for the role. And especially the scenes where she was trying to be funny did not play off. And I just think Ariana Grande just didn't do a really good job with that. Unfortunately, this is just not, I felt, not her role. And she didn't do anything that great in it. But as I mentioned before, definitely a little cameo or a little spot that she played in the film Don't Look Up. That's right, Don't Look Up. Uh, actually was a lot better acting choice for her versus this. And definitely, if you want to see something else Ariana Grande has been in, definitely check out Don't Look Up for performance of that. Because I felt that was a far superior role for her that worked out a lot better than this film. So overall, I just was not very happy with Ariana Grande in this film. I just didn't care for it. I thought that she didn't bring anything special to the character and didn't really give us great Galinda or Glinda. And I just was really sad that, you know, it, it didn't honor at all who um, the original Glinda was or any other version we've seen in the past. Uh, just overall, not the greatest performance for her. And I think we could have done without Ariana Grande in this film. But if you haven't seen Ar Ariana Grande in anything recently, check her out on Wicked to see for yourself what you think of her performance. So that brings me to the next person I'd like to talk about in this film, and that, of course, is the Wicked Witch of the West herself, or as they uh, name her in this story, Elphaba, who is played by Miss Cynthia Arrivo! Oh yeah, Cynthia Arrivo! Woo! Cynthia Arrivo! Yeah! So Cynthia Arrivo, you might recognize from a few films over the years. She was in Harriet, of course, which was about Harriet Tubman. She has been in a slew of things over the years and has become really popular, and I would say over the last five, six years or so. And uh, is, you know, a rising star who has a lot of great potential. The things I have seen her in, I think she does a decent job, and she's pretty decent. Now, I didn't realize what kind of singing voice she had until I saw her in this film, and she definitely was a lot more singing and entertaining than Ariana Grande was. I couldn't stand Ariana Grande's uh, singing in this film. I didn't think it was that great or anything, but I thought Cynthia Rebo wasn't too bad, and I thought that her, you know, songs that she was singing in, she did a pretty decent job. Now, I think that she looked really interesting in the green makeup and the look that she presented throughout the film. I really enjoyed. I thought that overall, Cynthia did a decent job for what the character was supposed to be about this different version of the Wicked Witch of the West before she becomes the Wicked Witch of the West. And I thought that she did a decent job of giving us, you know, some kind of uh, interesting parts in the film that were somewhat entertaining. But overall, I still think that this characterization could have been just done better, I feel. And I don't think Cynthia really brought everything she could have to the role. And 
could have been less kind of mopey and not as uh, just, you know, kind of downtrodden. And I think that she could have made the character more peppy and more fun and, you know, showing kind of those evil little things popping in to make her want to be this way. And I honestly, I have never seen the play or I've read the book, so I'm not sure how accurate this was. But from what I've read online, it was saying that a lot of the characters in this film and some of the characters, they were kind of altered, you know, from the original source material. And so, you know, coming from watching and loving The Wizard of Oz, Margaret Hamilton, who I absolutely loved as the Wicked Witch of West, seeing this version of the character, I would have loved to see Margaret Hamilton have the chance to play that, like, her bringing, her upbringing of, you know, what she was. And, you know, of course, you know, in the original book and in the original movie, this was all a dream in Dorothy's head. So, the Wicked Witch of West was a fake person and wasn't didn't have all this backstory. So, this is also very, you know, open to interpretation. And I think that, you know, Cynthia Rubio tried to interpret it as best she could. And with what she's seen in the previous plays and stuff... I thought she did an okay job. Was it the greatest? No, but I still think that it was better than Ariana Grande, and I did enjoy her in some parts, and I thought she did some decent acting uh, and, you know, did some decent singing. Now, if you haven't seen Cynthia Reeve or anything, definitely a great film to check her out in. It's a great film that came out a couple years ago, about six, I believe, now, and it's just a really well-casted film. And that was a film called Widows. Yeah! Widows! Yeah! She actually plays one of the characters in the film that is a widower, and she is really awesome in it. And I really enjoyed her, what she brought to it. I liked the characterization she gave, and I thought that that film really showed her acting ability and how fun she can be as an actress. And I just really enjoyed what she brought to it and her interactions with the other actresses throughout the film. And I just think she did a good job of giving us a really... A uh, fun character that really played out well in that film and given us a solid interpretation of that character. If you haven't seen Cynthia Reeve, think definitely check her out in Widows. She did a really fantastic job. But overall, I think she did a decent job in Wicked. I thought she was okay. I think she was definitely, you know, middle class, but definitely I think she did a decent job and definitely felt that she was more entertaining than Ariana Grande was. If you haven't seen Cynthia Rebo anything recently, go check her out on Wicked. See it for yourself. What did you think of Cynthia Rebo? So that brings me to the next actor I like to talk about this film, and also my favorite person in this film who made it the most entertaining for me. And that, of course, is Mr. Jeff Goldblum. Oh, yeah! Jeff Goldblum! Jeff Goldblum! Yeah! So Jeff Goldblum, absolutely love this dude. He is so fantastic, so fun, always enjoyable to watch. Uh, you know, from everything he's been in, from, you know, his character in the Jurassic Parks to uh, in his little quirky characters in other films like Thank God It's Friday and, uh, you know, his recent show Chaos to his uh, great show that was on Disney Plus for a little bit. Uh, the World According to Jeff was fantastic and he is just always fun to watch. His characters are always hilarious and out there and just is a great character, actor, and he just always fun to enjoy. So when I found out that he was playing Oz, I thought that was super fantastic job in casting. He was perfect for that role, and he played it and made it to the T in this film. He was absolutely fantastic. And he definitely, when he finally popped on the screen, is when I really started getting into the film. And he just was fantastic. I loved his singing. I liked his interactions with the other actors and actresses. And I enjoyed just what he brought to his scenes that were in the film. And he looked super cool in the outfit, too, and everything. And he just was so fun. And he definitely, you know, outplayed everyone in this film. And just showed, you know, he's a great veteran. He's a great, fun actor that can bring things to life so well. And he just made me so excited for this film. And wanting to enjoy it again. And want me to watch more of it. And, you know, get through the film. Because at some points, I almost was like, uh, I am so bored. I don't know. Maybe I should just not finish this. At, you know, it was almost to that level, and then Jeff Golden popped up, and I got reinvigorated, because he just, he really brought it back to life, and gave us a really outstanding performance as Oz. 
Now, if you haven't seen Jeff Goldblum, I think definitely a great film to check him out in is a great remake film from the 1980s called The Fly. Yeah! The Fly. Yeah! Absolutely love this film. Such a great remake. Directed by David Cronenberg. Uh, starring Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum himself. And he just plays Seth Brundle to the T. He brings to light this great body horror creature feature film. And I absolutely love the portrayal of Seth Brundle in this film. He, he plays it so well. He gives us a phenomenal performance. And just his, you know, all of his movements, all of his thinking throughout this whole film is just on point and amazing in this film. And he just really brought to life, you know, this great classic that was from the 60s uh, that had Vincent Price in it and gave us this brand new 80s version that was just so phenomenal and so well directed and written and just acted by him. And him and Gina Davis had such great chemistry as we know that they were married in real life at the time he just really played that character so well along with gina and just did a great job and i just think it's one of his best performances if you haven't seen jeff goldman thing definitely check him out in the fly he did a phenomenal job in that but he was so fantastic in this film one of my favorite parts of this film and he just really played it and knocked it to the t for this character of oz if you haven't seen jeff goldman recently go check him out on wicked definitely worth a watch for mr jeff goldman so a couple honorable mentions I like to give in this film was, of course, uh, the great Michelle Yeoh was in this film. We all know from Shang-Chi, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, uh, you know, Crap Tiger, Hidden Dragons, etc. And, of course, Mr. Bowen Yang uh, from SNL and also from Nora Queens. Both these actors and actresses are amazing. They're so much fun to watch. Both of them added some great, you know added texture and flavor to the film that was super enjoyable. Bowen Yang's character actually originally is a female character in the original play and book, so it is gender swapped in this film, and I still think he did a great job with that. I thought he was super funny and hilarious, and uh, he just brought his really great, fun Bowen Yang things to him. And then Michelle Yeoh as the head mistress of the school of shiz, as they call it. Shiz, that's super hilarious, that name. Uh, uh, shiz. I'm, I'm surprised it wasn't called shits. Anyways, uh, Michelle Yeoh was so awesome as that character, too. I thought she did a great job. I loved it as the movie progressed, kind of her character coming more to life and giving us more interesting thoughts. And she just was so super cool in this film. And I just wanted to give both of them a shout-out because they were both a, a pleasure in this film as well. Now, if you're not familiar with what... Wicked is about. Basically, Wicked gives you the backstory of the relationship between Galinda and the Wicked Witch of the West, Alphabub, and kind of, you know, how they meet in school and are friends, and then kind of their, uh, you know, unfortunate disconnection as they each go different ways, where Galinda becomes a good guy and the Wicked Witch becomes a bad guy. And basically, it's that story. This is it is part one of the film series. They're supposed to be making a second part, which comes out next year, to show the conclusion of the play, or book, as you like to call it. Uh, but, you know, like I said, there was a lot of great visuals in this film that I loved. The train in this film was so awesome looking. It was so cool. And the whole Emerald City was freaking amazing, too. Uh, and just so well executed and so well CGI-ly done. It just looked amazing. And, you know, there was a lot of fun things about the film, but also, the one thing I do have to say that I didn't get was, why were the munchkins not actually munchkins? Why was there, why did we only get little people when we got to Emerald City? Why didn't we see any little people in munchkin land? And, you know, why didn't we get that, you know, midget effect or little person effect, you know, in the Munchkin Land, when we have a character that is supposed to be a Munchkin, and he's like normal size. That's my only really big complaint about the film, other than some of the woke things they added to it. But overall, I was just like, why is there actually no, you know, actual Munchkins in this film? And that was very disappointing, because the Munchkins were a huge part of the original film, and I feel throughout any, you know, Wizard of Oz iteration of any sort. 
And so it was really sad not to see actual munchkins in this film. But overall, there's some great sequences through this film that, you know, were really beautifully done. The, you know, cinematography was amazing. The look of certain things were so cool. There's definitely some great moments where the outfits are really cool looking on Glinda, on, you know, Ephibub to, uh, to some of the people at the school, uh, how Jeff Goldblum looks and stuff like that. The monkeys were really awesome. We get to see how they get their wings, which was interesting. And overall, it just visually, the film was absolutely fantastic. But overall, the actual acting, the execution, just was not up to par for me in a really decent film. Fortunately, I have to give this a 5 out of 10 Golden Movie Boxes up. I just was not very pleased with it. And I was really disappointed because I was really looking forward to this. Because I've always been interested in seeing the Wicked play and reading the book. And this film just really kind of sunk it for me. And I was really hoping for a lot more fun to it. You know, similar to like The Wizard of Oz or Return to Oz or Oz Great and Powerful. Because all three of those films were absolutely fantastic. Uh, but overall, I think the film itself is is okay. Middle class and, and had a lot of potential that just did not get anywhere. If you haven't seen it... I recommend at least, at least go check it out once to see for yourself what you think about the film. And overall, like I said, it was an okay film. So that's it for this movie review, guys. As always, thank you for watching, thank you for liking, and thank you for being a subscriber. Or if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe so you don't miss this video. As always, people, if you love my stuff here, don't forget to check out any older new videos you might not have seen mine yet. As always, people, if you want to show support for the channel, please check out my awesome Patreon page and become a part of my Patreon where you get all kinds of extra crucible you don't get here on my YouTube channel. So please, definitely check that out. As always, huge shout out to my followers and subscribers, new and old. Thank you so much for being a part of the channel. As always, catch you in the next one.